Hi, my guest tonight is Flavia Brunetti. She is an author, book reviewer, travel blogger, humanitarian, so a lady of many talents. So I'm going to admit her now. So I hope she's there on the other side, waiting. Ah, I can see something. Here we are. Hello, hello. Good evening, Flavia. Come stai? Bene, grazie. Tu come stai? Okay, okay. I hope it's okay if I have an aperitivo. Please do. So, <laughs> a very nice chilled Trebbiano. Wonderful. Are you in Italy? Yes. <laughs> okay, where are you? Um, Abruzzo. I nearly forgot that. Abruzzo. Oh, the other side of Rome to you. The other, where are you now in Rome? I'm in Rome now, yes. Well, cheers. Salud. Cheers. Salud. You know, I only have water, but cheers. <laughs> I should have thought of it too. It is, it's the right time for Aperitivo, <laughs> so I really should have thought of it. I thought so too. It's lovely to talk to you and to meet you. You have a very illustrious bio and profile. And I don't know where Thank to you. start first because there are so many things I want to talk to you about. So let's go back to the beginning. Talk me through childhood. Where was that? California, Rome or both? Both. So I was born in Italy. Yeah. And then I kind of I spent my childhood primarily uh, in California, right outside of San Francisco in Mill Valley, California. Mm -hmm. um, but my family primarily was based in Rome. And so I spent a lot of my younger years going back and forth, um, feeling very, I, I felt very American uh, up to a certain point in my life because I spent so many years in the US. Yeah. Your formative yeah. years, your education. So at that point, you felt more American than anything else. Okay. Yeah, I would say yes. Okay. It's funny to say because now it feels so different. But at the yeah. time, yes, because I spent so many, the formative years I spent, you know, primarily in the US. Um, yeah. And I felt, I felt very American. Okay. And then, so then after your formative years, your education, I know that you came to Rome to do your your we say degree in English um, um what do you call it in Italian your laurea. Laure laurea so what made you decide okay I do feel American but I'm now going to do my degree go to university in Rome what led to that decision um I thought it was time to come back to Italy and it educationally speaking it was a I mean I you know I had just graduated high school and I thought it was a good moment mm. and I actually moved back to Rome it's funny I haven't thought about this in years but I moved back to Rome I stayed about three months and I missed California so much right. that I actually moved back to California okay. um, and stayed there and did a year of university there um, but then most of my family, the, the family members that were living there were moving back to, to Italy. Um, and I thought, you know, it's, it's also just, it was time to kind of bring the family together again. And I didn't want to be so far away from my family members anymore. Um, it's quite a, it's also quite a time difference. And I'd spent my whole life so far away. Yeah, um, and so imagine. I just wanted to come back and I thought, you know, I'll give it a try. And then if it doesn't work out, I, I, I won't stay. Um, and then I went back to Rome and ended up staying. Time. Where is home? Where is home? Oh, is it, is it is wherever home. I hang my hat is home? <laughs> is, or is it? No, it's definitely I feel Italian. Or do you feel American? Or I can't imagine. Home is Rome. Home is Rome now. That's quite a thing to say, isn't it? Especially as you've been brought up, you know, as we said, you know, your school, your education, your friends, your lifestyle is American. 
you know, to, yeah. to make that, it's quite a huge leap, I think, really, um, to end up in Rome. And there was definitely an adjustment period. I can imagine. What was the hardest thing to adjust to? Um, the language? No, you, you already no, spoke. No, I spoke that. Italian. Okay. Right. And I had, I mean, I'd gone back and forth my whole life and I felt a little bit of both places, but my heart was just very, very in the US, very California. Um, and it took about six months. Um, and I mean, I know it sounds cliche to say, but probably the point where that switched was when I started making friends here in Italy. Yeah. I was also, I mean, this was about, I was about 19 years old then. And it's, I think, also an age where having your peers is very important. And when I started meeting people and kind of bonding with people, and because I was going to an international university, I was also meeting people that also missed places, other places. And that was actually part of the inspiration eventually for um, All the Way to Italy, was meeting all of these people that were coming from different places and missed somewhere else, but then had this incredible connection to Italy. Right. And I, I, I fell in love with it almost overnight. Like it was almost exactly the six month mark where all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, this city, like this, how incredible, how beautiful. And it's, it was a love hate relationship. It still is. I find Rome a difficult city to live in, mm -hmm. uh, but there's nothing like her though. No, no, I can imagine. I, I reviewed a book called, um, called Two Women in Rome by Elizabeth Buchan, and it just made me think, I really need to spend more time in Rome. I really need to, you know, to, to see the bits that, you know, the, off the tourist trails, yes. off the tourist trails. So now you are based in Rome, I guess, yes. to a certain yes. extent. And you do so many things, don't you? You have your, your humanitarian work, which is one, one thing that you do, which I would imagine is hugely rewarding, yet challenging. And you do, uh, you, you have this wonderful blog as well, so that you're talking about all your travels. Talk us through where that came from. Where did the writing come from? Uh, the writing, I will say probably, if not the biggest constant of my life, one of the biggest constants of my life has always been, uh, even when I was a little kid, uh, I always jotted things down. Um, it was always something that was, that was there and it continues to be. And so I've always written. Um, I, don't, I don't know at what point I realize that what I wanted to do was was write books okay um but eventually I did but I will say that I mean writing is I mean what so my I was raised by my two aunts and one of them always used to tell me you know even when you were just a little kid you would always want to write everything down and you know giving me a notebook was like the greatest gift that you could give me and I was a kid and even now as an adult, giving me a notebook is still the greatest gift you can give me. So at it's least not, in that, I'm Christmas constant. presents are not difficult for you. I'm then. easy. I'm easy. A pen, a notebook. I have like and my favorite notebook. pen shop in Rome. I mean, um, is, but no, that's a constant. What is, what is it that fires you up about the writing? I mean, you, you must see so many, apart from Rome, you see other places in the world. Is, is it to record it for posterity? Is it to put your take on things? Is it to hand down to the next generation? What fires you? What's the passion? Um, gosh, I hope the next generation is is reading. Um, but Good. I hadn't. So I hadn't, do I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I hadn't thought of it uh, that way. But um, I think writing is how I process things. Okay. Right. And it kind of comes as like a thing that I, especially if, if there are changes in my life or I'm in a new place. I mean, my work brings me, has brought me to several places and sometimes you feel a bit alienated um, yes. or, you know, you're settling into a new place and wanting to write about it somehow has just always been, I think, how I process it. It kind of comes right. 
automatically, like I have to put this down on paper, even if it's just like jotting things down on my phone, on my notes app. Um, and then something will, something eventually comes from that, but it's something that I do because it, because it's something that I have to do. Yeah, it's inherent in you to do this. You know, it's not just, oh, I really must write home or I really must write this diary. I always find those things I always want to write a diary, but it seems such a chore somehow. Whereas for you, it, it obviously isn't a chore at all. It's, where's my pen? Where's my notebook? You know, let's write something down. I'm of terrible the... at keeping a diary, though. I will admit that. <laughs> that feels like a chore to me. I've, I keep, yeah. People tell me like, oh, you must love to journal. And I'm like, not really. I, I've tried it. It, it. it seems like such a romantic concept. Like, it oh, does, I wake up in the morning. I can't do it. It feels like I'm doing like a school assignment. And where, how did you get to writing the book that you've done, which is your, your debut novel, all the way to Italy? How did you get to that point? So it was a book I thought about for several years before it kind of materialized into, oh, I think I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna try and write this book. Yeah. Um, and I think it came from a series of, of places. Um, I am, as I imagine, as I imagine you must be as well, I'm, I'm really entranced by the magic that Italy has, but not just that, the fact that so many people are so drawn to this country. Even though there are so many things about it that frustrates you, people always feel this incredible, ma there's something magic about Italy. About what is the country. magic? What, what is that? What's the magic? It's not I just the I'm weather, gonna... is it? And the no, pizza. although that is spectacular. And the gelato. What is the magic? <laughs> what is it? Uh, I think I'm going to spend my whole life trying to figure that out through my <laughs> writing. Um, but I think there is, I really think there's something about, about Italy. I think there's, there's a, I think there's there's a magic to it, a combination of the the history, the yeah. the culture, the the passion of the people. The I I I wish I had I wish I I mean I wish I had better words for it. Um, but it's quite hard to put your finger on, no. But it's it's there even in even in the moments that it's quite desolate. I mean, I was here during the COVID lockdowns, and I found it. I mean, chilling, no, these unbelievable, like the Colosseo and the Pantheon, just empty. 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 And you think- Eerie, ghostly. It's eerie. And, and yet it's so no. majestic. Like there is something about this city that lives. I mean, I guess that's why they call it the eternal city. People mm -hmm. have spoken better than me for many, many years. But, but the um, eternal city, yeah. I mean, there's just something about it that you can't quite put your finger on. But people sometimes, <laughs> they come to visit once, and they think about it for the rest of their lives. And you go somewhere else and you say, oh, you know, I'm Italian. Everybody loves that. Everybody I loves know, Italy. I know. They do. They do. There's something that's just synonymous. And there was, like you say, several things. I think the fact, like you said, the architecture, the history, which is quite strange in a way because Italy's quite a new country anyway, generally. You know, it's not like the United Kingdom, for example. Um, and then you have the style and the culture, and it's quite an explosive mix together. I mean, back home in England, if I say, well, it's Italian, oh, well, it must be good. It must be good. It must be, it must be real, it must be authentic, and it's Italian. There is just something synonymous with, you know, it, it's Italian, it's an Italian handbag, it's an Italian shoes, it's an Italian whatever. So it must be good. Right. And I think that's a huge achievement, but I think Italy's, has Italy done that by design or has Italy achieved that just through chance in a way? It's quite bizarre, isn't it? Yes, uh, it is. I think, um, I mean, I actually think Italy could, if it was going to do it by design, it could do a bit of a better job. <laughs> okay. I mean, just in the sense that, you know, I, I think that, um, I mean, as an Italian, I think that we could take better care of our monuments, we could take better care of the country. There's a series of things that I think, the way the country is run, we could probably do better. But I think the heart of the country is what it, it is. is. It's beautiful, no matter what. 
You, I noticed you reviewed a book. Um, I've heard of this. I haven't read this. John Hooper, The Italians. Yeah, yeah. And and I know that you said some of the truths in this book make me so angry. J just elaborate on that. You felt he was right, but you were almost annoyed that he was right and he was pointing these things out. I think... I think it's important to point out these things. I think it's a really important, I mean, I think words are incredibly powerful. And yeah. so I think that when we see something that we want to express, even just to generate conversation, to generate discussion and other ideas, it's really important to say them. Do I, as an Italian, do I wish that that weren't always the case? You know, do I wish that we were maybe doing some things better than we're doing? Yes, of course. Um, do I think that what we have is one of the most beautiful countries in the world and we should be possibly taking better care of it? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's a series of truths that are uncomfortable, but that doesn't yeah. mean that we shouldn't talk about them. No, no. Talking about writing, let's move on to the book that you've that you've that, that, that you've written um, some of the things that you've said about um, I've got from your website um, for people who feel more at home in an airport than they wish they did which I think is a very beautiful <laughs> expression when you talk about travel travel is wonderful but travel can be stressful and I love this analogy that you've, because, you know, if you want to travel, you just have to spend half your life in an airport traveling. So talk us through how you feel about that, how you feel about travel in general. You think it's a good thing, obviously. I do. I absolutely do. Um, I think it opens the mind, the eyes. Yeah. I mean, it opens everything, right? I mean, one of the most, I think one of the most powerful things that we can do is meet other people, meet other cultures, put ourselves in situations that make us sometimes uncomfortable. Um, if we have the opportunity to get up and move somewhere else, to get up and move somewhere else. At the same time, do I think that you can also find beauty and something new around the corner? Yes. I, I, I really, as I move forward a bit in my life, I, I realize that like, it really is what you make of it. Mm -hmm. Travel, I think is, I mean, it's been one of the defining features of my life. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes not by design, sometimes by design. Um, I think it can be very lonely mm -hmm. um, in an expansive sort of way. And I think and one of the things that, that you know, I talk about in, um, in the book is the idea that um, like, what's your homing beacon? Is it just one place? Is it, is it everywhere that you go? Is it the new people that you meet? Um, is it actually, you know, sometimes when you grow up a bit everywhere, you feel that you don't have a home. No. And then hopefully at some point you realize that you can, you make a home everywhere you go. Mm. Mm. But these in-between spaces can be very disconcerting, no? I mean, they can be in, in, in also a beautiful way, but also in this way that, you know, you're, you're traveling and there's these places in between, like between light and dark and between night and day and between the place that you're going and the place that you left. Are you, are you moving away from something? Are you moving towards something else? I just, I think there's a lot of space to expand there. What... In terms of travel, is there anywhere that you would still in, in the world that you think I still want to go there? I've heard about that. I've heard about this place. I still want to, to, to explore these places. Can you see yourself doing this in your 70s? <laughs> Hopefully you can. <laughs> it gets a little harder, let me tell you. <laughs> when you're in a huge airport like... Um, like the Rome airports, you know, but uh, can you see yourself still wanting to do that? Yes, mm. I hope so. I mean, like yeah. I said, I, you know, I certainly hope so. There's so many places to see. Yes. Um, 
there are so many places that, um, you know, some years ago for work, I moved to Tunis yes. and Tunis was a place that I had never even thought of before. Um, I had a completely different concept of it. I almost had no concept of it. It was just not a place that I would have ever thought to go. I ended up living there almost five years mm -hmm. and it changed my life. I mean, it was an incredible place. I adored it. I consider it another, I consider it now another homing beacon, if you will. Right. Okay. And so, I, and that's the beautiful thing about travel is that you end up in the, and Tunis is also 45 minutes away from Rome. I mean, it's so close and yet it's a whole different, it's a whole different world, mm -hmm. completely different culture, which has some really interesting overlaps with the Italian culture. And that's when you start to see that even in these new places where you think, I don't speak the language and you land and you think, oh my gosh, you know, no one here is like me and you feel alone. And then ultimately you realize that like, there's so many, oh, there's so many words that are similar and the, the culture, there's, there's always a similarity to be found. And then all of a sudden you see them everywhere. And I think that that goes a long way in, reducing the fear of the unknown in another person that we don't recognize. Did you learn any Arabic while you were there? Did you pick up any Arabic? A very little bit, I'm very sorry to say. Um, <laughs> I learned a bit more French and I'm still working on the French and I'm also still working on the Arabic, but Arabic okay. is definitely like that's the language that I really want to learn. Um, oh, right. Wow. I've lived in more than one Arabic speaking country and I've realized that it's also a, a region of the world that I find fascinating and beautiful. And so, you know, when you go, when people come to Italy and maybe they've spent several years, but they don't speak the language or they don't try, as an Italian, you think, well, you could try. And so therefore I have that same responsibility when I go to a country where I don't speak the language and I stay there not to be perfect but to but to to try just to have some words <laughs> yeah just a few words to you know, make the effort yeah so where is next for you in the world where would you like to go where would you like to see oh my god traveling or living traveling Well, I think the place that I will go next is not a new place because I've been there before, but I'm going, I will visit some friends soon in the US. In terms of new places, oh, but this is within Italy. I will be going to a new place soon. I'm going near Pienza in okay. Tuscany. And I've actually never been to this little town where we're going, right. which is why I say that I think you can also explore close to home and find a completely different thing and it's also part of why I love Italy it doesn't take much to get to something that's completely new because you you speak about other places I mean you've blogged about Florence you've blogged about Venice uh, how do you feel do you feel there are many similarities with Rome or is Rome just out there on its own I mean we feel a bit that way about London really London is just London. It's the capital. There is nothing like London, even though you see other cities and they all have something to offer, but London is just one on its own. I, oh, I don't know, because you mentioned Venice and I'm so in love with Venice. I just think Venice is such a fairy tale of a city, mm -hmm. um, especially when there are less people. When there are right. more people, I think you lose a bit the, right. Right. the, the feel of it. But I, I had the opportunity to be there when there were a bit less people. And it's truly a fairy tale. I mean, it's something out of, out of a magic story. Um, I also love Florence. Um, what about but I think the, Rome is wrong. further south? further south what oh city? also further south oh my gosh I've been down to Calabria okay um I've traveled through Sicily right did you like Sicily did you yes, like I love Sicily. Sicily I yes. love Sicily I think the food is amazing I think the the people there are so warm it feels almost like a different but all of it feels like a different country and I think that's part of the thing that makes Italy unique in a way that you you know so, I mean, the, a lot of the different dialects throughout Sicily, I don't understand them. And I, yeah. I mean, my native tongue is Italian. 
Yeah. Um, but the people are so warm and welcoming and it sounds like a cliche, but then it's true. Like they're so excited that you're there. It's so mm -hmm. beautiful. The mm -hmm. food is incredible. Uh, there's unbelievable history. I mean, we went by Palermo and it was mm -hmm. completely different energy, at least for me from Rome. Yeah. It feels I can like imagine, totally... I can imagine. I mean, we and... like Catania. We just love Catania. I could sit in that square in Catania forever. <laughs> just, you know, with a glass of wine, just, just watching things. It's so old, so beautiful. It's wonderful. What do you think of Abruzzo, I must ask? I'm trying to think the last time I was in Abruzzo. Oh, you say I... it so nicely, Abruzzo. Oh. <laughs> and I always say Abruzzo. <laughs> no, no, you say it wonderfully. Abruzzo. Um, I love it. And I want to see more of it. Yeah, there's so I mean, there's so much of it to see. No, I mean, there's so much of a of Italy to see. And I need to spend more time in Abruzzo, actually. You do. You absolutely do. And I think because of the history of Abruzzo being so isolated, so cut off for centuries, explains why it's almost the region that time forgot basically, isn't it? it? It's losing it a little bit now, but it, it's still it's still very, very different from the rest of Italy. Um, you must come over to Abruzzo. Um, you've also, uh, you did a wonderful uh, review of um, Laura Morelli, didn't you? And the Artisans of Florence. Do you enjoy doing the book reviews? Yes, I so I haven't done them lately so much. And I was thinking the other day that I need to do more more of them because I really like reviewing books. Right. And and some of I mean some of my favorite writers I discovered through doing book reviews. Mm -hmm. Um now I can't remember her last name, but I reviewed her book some time ago. Gabriella, she wrote Sass Smarts and Stilettos. Okay. Right. Um She's also an Italian American writer. Um, amazing. And right. I actually ended up meeting her through this book review that I did. Right. Um, same with another book by Francesca Bilwamini. I mean, there's a whole amazing kind of crowd of women writers. Yes, that's who have that's amazing. This, that's brilliant. Yeah. And so I was thinking that's what I need to do more of is like the more book reviews. I mean. It's not often that things in Italy, like books, music crosses over to England. I don't know why, but it, it just doesn't generally happen. But we have a local author um, whose books have gone mainstream in England and they've had huge reviews. Uh, she had a film made of her book, La Minuta, uh, Donatella di Pietran. Um, and that's amazing that this lady from Abruzzo has got a book that has had huge acclaim in the States and England. And I think when that happens, that's that's awesome. That's really awesome, mm -hmm. isn't it, really? That's lovely. Um, so what's next for you? Another book, perhaps? So I just finished writing my second book. Okay. Um, also, not fully set in Italy, but partially set in Italy. And I think probably, I think somehow in everything I write, I'll always have to put Italy in there because it's such a, it's such a piece of my heart. Um, and Rome especially, I think, is, is always going to, you know, play a part. And so I just finished writing that. I wrote it... Um, I wrote it during COVID. I wrote it during the lockdowns in Italy. Um, I finished it when I was traveling for work. So throughout some other countries. Um, and so it's a bit of a different book. It's a different genre. Okay. Can you and tell us so the genre? Is that um, a secret? So it's, I don't think that's a secret. It's mythic fiction. Oh, wow. So it plays a little bit. And actually... Um, a short story based on the world of the book was published by 
the Open Doors Review uh, okay. last May. Um, if you haven't seen the Open Doors Review, check it out. It's actually a good friend of mine who started this literary magazine who actually used to run the blog with me years ago. Okay. Um, and she opened this amazing literary magazine during COVID lockdown. Um, and I and I wrote a story for it. And that story was something I wrote while I was writing the book. And so it ends up taking part in taking place in that world that's a bit real life, a bit magic, a bit um, mythological retelling, if you will. And it touches in on Rome and then some other places throughout North Africa. Go. Wow, so we'll look forward to that. Uh, the, so. blog, the blog is called uh, Which Way to Rome, for anybody that wants to follow that. The book that you've written that's been published is All the Way to Italy. Crazy question, I know, but you have so many, you have so many, we could, in saying English, fingers in the pies. You have so <laughs> many projects. <laughs> it's Bit un, a bit unseemly, I know, but it's very complimentary. You have so many uh, projects on the go. Crazy question. On your epitaph, how would you like to be remembered? The blogger, the traveller, the humanitarian, the American? How would you like people to remember you? Oh, my gosh, Wendy, this is such a good question. <laughs> I wish... And it actually makes me think of, it's not a direct answer, but um, Robert Frost yeah. said once, and were an epitaph to be my story, I would have written of me on my stone. I had a lover's quarrel with the world. Right. And for some reason, this is like a thing, I've probably misquoted it and I'm sorry, um, but I always think of this because it was such a poignant thing. I had a lover's quarrel with the world. I, I really like that. But for my own epitaph, I don't know. You know, it, it's, I know it's a strange question to say what you want in your epitaph. But, you know, sometimes it's how you think you, you just want to be remembered. And I, I don't know. I remember asking my father that years and years ago. And he just thought about it. And he just said that I never knowingly did anyone harm or said anything harmful wow. and it always and I always thought wow that's very poignant you know yes. you, just, you know about how, how you just want people to remember you so I think it's it, for you you have so many wonderful things you're at the start of your career the start of your life I can see this going in some amazing directions for you Oh, thank you, Wendy. I'm going to call you next time I feel down and need to pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it's just it's just so lovely that you, you're doing all these wonderful things at such a young age. You seem a very kind of, I, I wish I'd been like that, you know. I still don't know what I want to do for a job. You know, I'm still, I, I still, but don't I know. still don't know what I want to do. For job. I mean, that's the beauty of life, right? You can always change at the last minute. I mean, I just kind of, well, I'll do a bit of this and I'll do a bit of that, but I just, you know, adore people that just, well, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to go live in Tunisia and or do humanitarian work. Or I think that's just, I'm going to do some writing. It's such an amazing thing that you're doing. I mean, where, where do you see your career going? Is it mapped out for you, do you think, somewhere in the stars? Um, oh, my gosh. Um, what I, I think what I would like, I certainly want to continue the work. The, I, as you mentioned, I work for an international humanitarian organization. Um, I love the work I do, and I really want to continue that. I also very much want to continue and develop the writing side yeah. so I think those are the two big things well Basically. the most important thing is that I want to be happy yes of course of course but I think career-wise I, I see those things kind of in parallel also because a lot of my writing happens 
as I travel for my yeah. work. So I think in yeah. some ways there's a mixture there and there's It's an kind of self-perpetuating, isn't it? As you travel, you're writing. And as you're writing, it's kind of, you know, opening up other things for you, opening up other doors. Well, it's been so lovely to speak to you. Wendy, really, thank you so much. I really- This was so nice. <laughs> just wish you the best with everything that you do. If you come to a Brooks Oak, you must come over for dinner. That is an absolute given. I absolutely will. I will reach out. And when you come and spend more time in Rome, you let me know and we will go and have a delicious gelato. That sounds so wonderful. Tell me one place in Rome, off the tourist trail, where, where would you go in Rome? You know, my favorite, favorite place in Rome, though, is like the tourist spot. Oh, really? I love the Pantheon. I just think the Pantheon is like one of the most beautiful, like, I can just sit in that piazza and stare at the Pantheon. And also like, there's so always so many people there. So you can see people going by that whole area back behind there. Yeah. You can just get lost in it and walk around. And there's so many things to see, even when it's, yes, it's a tourist hotspot, but there's so many things that you can see just walking around. And I think that's how you discover Rome. You just walk around. I mean, I, we've been to Rome a few times and I, I just remember being blown away by the Colosseum absolutely blown away that this building is still standing really and then when you go and you know this is where they kept the lions this is where the gladiators because we've all seen the gladiator with russell crowe haven't we really it, it's it's just amazing it is such a building such an iconic building you have to see you have to take a night tour i don't know if okay. you've done it the night tour of the Colosseum is like a whole other world. It's like very really? kind of eerie and really, oh, really wow. cool. Definitely do that next time you're in Rome. And oh, if you come good... during the summer, summer they yeah. do the opera at the Terme di Caracalla. Okay. You have to send me an email and I'll tell you all the things you have to do. <laughs> but definitely Colosseo at night. That sounds there's wonderful. something different about it. It's like a different yeah. place yeah well it's been lovely to talk to you and as i say i wish you well with everything that you do um so we'll leave it there and, and thank you so much and thank i've nearly you. finished this wine how naughty am i <laughs> enjoy the rest of it have a wonderful aperitivo and thank you so much for taking the time really and you the same lots of love amore buona serata Buon sonata. Ciao.